This episode is really fun to think about for me because as I've been organizing my own business behind the scenes and then helping clients organize their business, I've seen what makes the biggest impact. What is helping them get the biggest return on their investment? The investment of the time spent organizing, what is giving them the biggest return? So today I'm going to tell you three things to organize for the biggest return on your investment, the biggest ROI. And as you listen to this episode, I want you obviously to pick one thing to start with. Don't try to do them all. Don't even think about it. Just choose one and erase all the rest. Of course, get into Organized Coach Academy. Okay, that's number one. (laughs) Get in there. The other thing that's happening right now, I'm opening up my small group mastermind called Organized to Profit, and you can fill out an application. The link is in the show notes. If you want specific help, if you want customized help, you want to spend weekly time really getting clear on your goals, on your messaging, on your processes, on your profit making. Are you making a profit in your business? And if you want that to be your goal for the next six months, get in Organized to Profit. The application is in the show notes. And here we go. Let's talk about the three things to organize for the biggest ROI. Are you ready to work less, feel more organized and productive, streamline repetitive tasks, and implement systems that allow your coaching business to run smoothly even without you? If so, you're in the right place. Welcome to the Organized Coach Podcast, your go-to source for practical tips and solutions. I'm your host, Tracy Hoth, professional organizer, certified life coach, simplifying expert, and most of all, down-to-earth fellow coach just like you. No matter if you think you're missing the organizing gene, have ADHD, or just love anything organizing, I'm here to help you become an organized coach with a business that works for you. Pull up a seat and let's get started. As I kind of mapped out this episode, I was like, okay, which one goes first? Does this one go first? I don't know. May- oh, nope, that one has to go first. So I'm just going to get started and we are going to, I don't know if they're in the exact right order, but the first thing to organize to get a return on your investment is your digital files. Now, I talk about this all the time. I have a free workshop that you can join at simplysquaredaway.com forward slash the number five files. Go there and watch that workshop. That shows you the only five files you need to organize your digital files. But the average worker, I just, well, actually one of my clients sent me this quote. The average worker spends two and a half hours daily Can you imagine two and a half hours daily searching for documents and files that they need in order to get their work done? Now, I kind of think that that might be a corporate stat. I don't know, but I'm thinking about how much time my clients tell me that they spend searching for things, searching for documents, making duplicates, trying to find it and then thinking, I know I made that and they just can't find it and then having to make it again. So all of that time. But the other part of that kind of ties into the the second thing that I will share to spend your time organizing. But it's the looking for things on your computer, trying to find links, trying to find the um, website that you need, trying to find the resource you had on a different website that you didn't know where it went, or you tried to keep it, you didn't know how to record it so you could find it again easily. So all of those things, if you spent, let's just say you waste an hour a day searching for things, trying to find things, wasting precious seconds, just pulling up a website. Imagine an extra hour every day that you have to focus on marketing, to focus on getting clients, making connections, putting out valuable content, thinking about your clients and solving problems. So all of those, that time that you spend, and that's one hour a day. Now this says two and a half hours a day, but let's just say you spend one hour a day. That's five hours a week. That's five times 52 (laughs) hours a year that you could save. That's the return on your investment 
just by organizing your digital files. Now, people that come in to Organize Coach Academy and that work with me in one-on-one or in this small group, one of the things that happens, and maybe this is you, they have many Google drives, they have different Google accounts, they have Dropbox, they have OneDrive, they have maybe their full time job, they have, you know, which has files, maybe they've had another business, so they have those files. So they have this big mess. And sometimes it takes, well, probably all the time, it really does take an investment of time to figure out how do I make all the Google drives work together? Or how do I choose which one place to keep everything? How do I make those decisions? How do I do it? You have to search to figure out how to do it. All of that time is an investment, but it is so worth it. The return that you are going to get from being able to have a task on your calendar, open that task because the time has come for that appointment, and you know where everything is and you can find it. That return, not only in time, but on your mindset, on your frustration level, on the stress level, the cortisol level in your body, all of that, the return is so valuable. So number one, focus on organizing your digital files. Okay, that's going to save you so much time, so much peace, It's going to create so much peace, so much confidence. And then when you want to have someone help you do something, you're able to find it. If you wanted to hire someone, everyone on your team, anybody on your team will be able to find what they need. Teams waste so much time trying to find things. So get that set up in your business right away. Get a file structure, very simple set into place and only use that file structure, start training your brain on filtering things through that file structure, and then get those little habits in place where you name the file when you make it or when you download something, you name it and put it in its home. Those two things are key. Always name it and always put it in its home immediately as much as possible. Now we all have those little bad habits. (laughs) So that's what you're going to be working on. But okay, number one, organize your digital files. The second thing that you can organize, invest in organizing for the biggest ROI is your bookmarks bar. Your digital files and your bookmarks bar are projects. You are going to spend time to get that project done And then for the most part, it'll stay. Now you'll have to maintain it, obviously, and you will schedule maintenance appointments within your business on a regular basis. But both of these are projects. So focusing on a project and scheduling those tasks and times on your calendar to get that project accomplished is key. Okay, but you don't have to set up any systems to organize your bookmarks bar. You don't have to create a system to organize your digital files. It's a project that you're gonna do and then you're gonna be done with it for the most part. And then you're gonna move into maintenance. But we don't have to create a system around a project unless we're gonna repeat the project, which in this case, if you use the maintenance step, you won't have to repeat this. Okay, so the books, the bookmarks bar is a project and you can schedule that on your calendar to do. Now, once you get started doing this, <laughs> you might just want to spend all your time making it so beautiful. But what I've found for myself is that this has created so much joy and so much ease when I sit down at my computer to do my work. My bookmarks bar has my calendar. It has my website login for the back end. It has my Google Drive. I just added Google Forms on there. A shortcut to that. I added Voxer. I have my Kajabi. I have Deadline Funnel and Canva and Amazon and Slack and Descript and I'm ChatGPT. I'm trying to think what else these are. So I have all of those little tiny cute symbols, they're favicons, they're logos with no words after them. 
And I just love how that looks. I love being able to get on my computer and click on one thing and I get to the destination that I want. I don't have to search for it. I don't have to have my hands on the keyboard to type, start typing it, which is kind of what I used to do. I can just find it immediately in one click. Then the next little section has my dashboards that I use to run my business. The idea tracker, the business dashboard, my client tracker, and then my podcast or content tracker. And I also have one um, money tracker that actually my accountant, Mark Butler, has set up. And so I've saved that so I can go in and check on money, profit and loss reports, what my rolling 12-month income is and all of that, which is easily right there. So those trackers, and then I have folders. So my clients are all in one folder, their notes. I have my um, current funnels that I'm working on in one folder. I have a podcast folder that has how to convert an M4 to an M3. I have that website linked in that podcast folder. And when I record a episode on Zoom, it comes down in an M4 and I need it to be in an M3. So I open that folder in one click. I just hover over it. And then in one click, I get to the website I need. You know how much time having this organized has saved me? It is so amazing. And just the other day on our Organized Coach Academy call, I helped someone set this up. We got on, we shared screens, we, I showed her how to do it. We, you know, looked at her specific bookmarks bar and worked out things that she needed. And then, then she's motivated. She knows how to do it. She's like seen how I'm doing it. I'm pointing her along each step as she does it. And then she can get off that call and she can continue working on it. She's not going to forget. She's not going to be discouraged because she's run into snags and she can't figure it out. She's motivated and she can go and do that. So that's the benefit of being in a program where you can jump on a call and we can share screens and we can get this stuff done. So as I work with clients individually or in my mastermind, these are little things I can see when we're working together. I can see, oh, do you have that on your bookmarks bar? Oh, that's a great idea if you're in a program to make a folder and put all the links you need for that program in your bookmarks bar, on your bookmarks bar. And I like how it's organized and I can help them the way their brain works, get it all organized and working well and being super efficient. Okay, so digital files. Number one, second thing, bookmark spar. Those two are both projects. The third thing I want to talk about that will have the biggest impact if you spend the time organizing it is your marketing activities. So marketing activities are something you are going to do over and over. And what marketing activity you choose is completely up to you, right? It's up to each of us what's working, what we're testing, what we think will work, <laughs> we want to do. But it's doing that marketing activity consistently. So when you think of something like this, a marketing activity, you need to create a process, a documented system for carrying out the activity, Okay, so notice the, the difference. The other ones were projects that we do once and then we, we maintain them. This is a marketing activity that we're doing consistently. So having and creating a process is going to be key. Documenting a system so that when you're ready to do this activity, maybe it's every Monday morning, maybe it's every day of the week, maybe it's Thursday afternoon. Maybe at the beginning of the week, you schedule it into your week when you see a free slot of time. Okay, so there's no rule on that. It's just what works for your calendaring system and how you manage your time. In the show notes, I will link to Amy Lippman's podcast episode. It was so good. She talked about specific marketing activities. So let's just say, as I think recently, when I talked to Kristen Dabney on the podcast, she shared all about LinkedIn. And that's her expertise. And she kind of talked me through it. And she's done an amazing two videos with me in Organized Coach Academy. It's one of the bonuses that shows you exactly how to do everything with LinkedIn and how to, and then she got back on a call with me and, and how to create a system for 
using LinkedIn as your marketing, as a marketing activity. Okay, so when you're going to use LinkedIn as your marketing activity, it's one, two, three, four, five steps. <laughs> you document each step. You put it in a like checklist. I just keep it simple. Put it in a Google document with a little check marks so they have a box you can check off. And then you pull up that Google checklist. You can even use your bookmarks bar again for that to be there. But then you open it up. You say, number one, do it. Number two, do it. Three, do it. Four, do it. Five, do it. And then maybe you notice. And you can also put the link to get on LinkedIn, but you'd probably have that on your bookmarks bar. You can put any link or password because maybe you'd have an assistant do this eventually. Once you perfect to the system of it, you could ask an assistant to go through and use your box, use your checklist, use your document to perform these activities. Another activity like that is podcast pitching. It doesn't even have to be just a podcast. Maybe it's pitching to teach their audience something or do a collaboration with them. But it's the process that you're using to reach out to first to find people and then to reach out to them and then to maybe have something you share with them. Maybe have um, you'd have a template that you would customize for each person you reach out to. So maybe that is one of your marketing marketing activities and that would be documented. You would use a system, you'd use a process to do that. And so you would document that process so you got better and better at it. So each time you sat down to do your marketing activity, you would have something already in place that you would just have to follow. Another one could be connections. Maybe you make connections with people. You reach out and say, hey, I'm interested in meeting up with you. You want to do a coffee chat so we can get to know each other's businesses or however, you know, it works for you or I'm offering a free 15 minute call. Would you be willing to connect with me? Maybe it's connections. It's reaching out. Okay. What do you do? Well, I mean, to find out what marketing activity you want to do, look at where your clients have come from. What's worked in order to get clients? And then create a system or process and then practice going through that system and perfecting it, being more efficient at it, including everything you need to do it in that document. And that would be the biggest ROI because you're so good at it. It's now documented and it's getting you clients. It's a marketing activity that's getting a return. So if you're going to spend time doing that, that's what's going to get you the return on investment. So investing in organizing that activity is going to get you a return. And maybe the return is going to be, that's not working. <laughs> I need to switch and find a different marketing activity that works. So it's totally up to, you know, how you look at the return, obviously, but you are going to spend time and get a return on that investment. Okay, so three things to organize. Which one are you going to choose? Digital files, your bookmarks bar, or marketing activity? Activities, but start with just one marketing. What marketing activity do you want to document in a process, put on your calendar on a consistent basis, and do it until you're super efficient and everything is documented exactly the way you want to do it. Okay, I hope this episode was helpful. These are the kinds of things we work on in Organized Coach Academy and also in my small group mastermind, Organized to Profit. The links to both of those are in the show notes. And I hope you have an amazing day. I hope you invest in organizing to get the biggest return. Wait, if you're finding this podcast useful, you must check out the Organized Coach Academy. It's my course where I walk you through every step to get your business organized, to get yourself organized, to save money and time, to prepare to hire someone, to do all the things that you want to do in your business with ease. Check that out at simplysquaredaway.com forward slash OCA. Also, I'm sure you've heard this a million times, but I would love it. It's my way of knowing that you're enjoying the podcast if you leave a written review. I have lots of freebies for you. They're linked in the show notes. You can find them in my bio on Instagram at Tracy Hoth. And until next week, have a beautiful day.